Hey, I'm starting to rebuild the engine for the RX50. It's a D50B0 engine. It's made by, is it Piaggio? I think. I think this was a replacement for the AM6, which some some similarities, I suppose. This has got less bearings. So, right. I've cleaned it up. I knocked out the old bearings. That one there. That's in a blind hole. I done. I removed that. I uh, just check that's in focus. Now. I removed that bearing with uh, the bread method. Oh, there you go. Sorry, two minds if that works. Like, but if you get the, if you get. A bit of your finest white bread. It could even be wholemeal bread if you wanted. But no big seeds in it. I'm just looking for the bowl. Right. So, just imagine you, you, you stuffed that full of bread there, packed it in, then you got a bowl as the same size as the bearing. And then I put a bit of gentle heat on that other side of the casing. Then, when you go to uh, when you put the the case another way, I put a bit of wood there to support that. So I done knock that in, put more bread in, so it compacted in. And then the next thing, if just make sure that that casing is warm enough, just a gentle heat like. Then you knock that, just imagine that's like that. You've got your hammer, tap, tap, tap. And all by magic, that starts to rise up. It's amazing. In fact, I've got a bit of bread here, it was in there. That's a piece of bread that came out the old bearing. In fact, there's all bearing there. Amazing. Put a bit of jam on that, you'd be alright. Bit of toast. Hey, right, anyway, right, back to this. So I've got the crank bearings in. Main ones for the gearbox. Now, when I stripped this, I took the wrong casing off. To start with, I done it arse to tit, as I call it. So, this, these are pretty good to strip, right? In with the selector drum first, you've got a shim on each side of this, top and bottom. So, a wee bit of gear oil in there to start with. Well, I say gear oil, this is 1040. A four stroke. Motorbike engine oil, so that does the job. So we've got that, just a little. Just work it in a wee bit. Right. Now, I'd. I can't remember if it was the last, the, the first one of these done, some did, had the uh, built up wrong, and put the shims in the wrong place. Now, a, a good way to check to make sure you've got your, your total drive train the right size and there's nothing missing. Now, in the, the Derby manual, there's a spec for this. I'm sure it's about 87.5. Now, if there's something missing about that, that's going to be all a cock. So you've got that. There's a washer up each side of that. There's no washers going this side, this one. So you marry that up like that. Little bit of oil. One of the 
bearings and just make sure nothing sorry drops off with this. This would be better if it was the other way around. I think after I've, I've uh, built this up, I do usually do this light, but this casing is absolutely, all well, the paints came off it, so I might give this a wee, sorry, touch up with the paint. These are sprayed silver for the factory. Right, so we've got that. Now, selector forks. You've got three. Yeah, there's a little clean up. I think I've turned that back in that way. Take this drum back out, I would think. And that shim's still on now. Anytime, just make sure you check the, the forks for, for wear or make sure they're not bent or anything like that. Selector rods, two different lengths. I'll soon find out what goes where. Do you? I don't know. I'll let you on the subject. Now right, you've got. I'll get some a eh? point in. Right, where your selector forks are going to engage, you've got. Selector there, you've got one there, and you've got one there. Right, so it's better can you get this in a better view. Right, we've got three selector forks. Just always make sure when you're doing these that you check for any any wear. Or anything bent or anything like that. That's got a wee bit of it there. Right, there's two of these, the same. And they're going that, that gear cluster there, I'm sure. Right, so let's think. These are to go next, I think. I'll try these in. I can't remember if you put the The selector drum and next, so I'll try these in. Right, so I think that one. I suppose if I was doing more of these, I've done loads of the AM6, I think this is the third one of these I've done. Right, so that's that, uh, and that'll actually spin round and line up with the, the selector rods. Now, I'd imagine that one's going to go in there. Now, let's see. 
so you've basically got they're going to line up that will swivel around and connect up with the, the selector drum I've got the camera, my phone and my new tripod right, so we'll get this back in, remember the washer So, enter the selector forks onto the drum. You just have to lift these these up to match the the corresponding sort of slot is on the on the drum. Well, this is got to be a good one to get in. Or if I could have got that. Can I get that? Yeah. If I keep the top one off until you get that bottom one entered. I'm going to have to get that light in this subject. Right, so just turn it now. That bottom selector just enter that into the drum there. Right, where's the little one? So you get that, and you just enter that and like that. So that's that in the arch. Get that one back in. Right. Now, two selector rods. Loosely, it doesn't matter what way up, there you go. A little bit of lube. Right, I would think you're going to have the short one at that side. thing is, the hole at the bottom where that, that rod goes in, then you fill that oil because you'll, you'll cause a sort of hydraulic and you'll not get, the, you'll not get it in. Well, you would eventually like it. And these should just always go in when they force. There's my match hammer. Take my 
So I want to make sure that that's entering. It feels like it. Just as they feel right. Just having a look at that. Let's see that works out there. Yeah, you can see that's a lot. That's a short rod. Goes in there on that side. I'm just not convinced that's right there. Putting that other casing on first and kind of see. Right, that's that. You have to take this off to get the other casing on. Obviously, I just put that on there to stop parts going to miss. Right, I have to get the crankshaft in first before I put the casing together. Right, that's the crank and that side of the and that bearing. Well, I done had that in the freezer overnight. And I just supported that underneath and I got a, a rubber mallet and that tapped on no bother. So. Right, that's it ready to, the two halves ready to come together. Now there is a big difference in this between the AM6 and this engine is you've actually got a, a gasket between the two halves of the crankcase. Now I still put a very, very thin smear of that uh, grey silicone, very, a lot of people probably, that's a no-no for a lot of people, but I've never had any problem, just a very thin smear, it's just a sort of insurance policy that I'm not going to have any oil, you're no caking it on. Or as I would call it, sliced in that one. Right, you've got the washer in there. I've got the two, the two dowels on.
shouts and um, Right, what I usually do, I usually pull that in with uh, the crankcase bolt. Right, what I want to do next, I've got the, the crankcase bolts torqued up to 10 newton meters. I'm going to fit the, oh, the oil seals on. Now the two the crank seals are the same each side and that's in there the size of the seal is 20 millimeters by 35 by 7 right now this one the clutch side I'll go with the spring facing out so what I'll do I'll give the the crank bearings a little loop with some two stroke when it's up and running that's obviously where the, the lubrication to the, the crank bearings comes for right a bit of, a little bit of lubrication on the the inside edge of the seal I'll get a socket to fit that Twenty-four millimeter. The top on the top. Just make sure it's gone in straight. Just head so it's, it's flush with the case in there, so you know it's it's level. Like that's that one in. side I'll get a wee bit smoky when we start this up right this side this goes towards the your magneto side and that seal the spring faces in the way Right, that looks alright. Right, when we're round here, we can fit the the one for the, the sprocket and the other seal for the the gear selector. Clutch box 
first. The size of this seal is do, 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 do. Stop there. It's seventy millimeter thirty five by eight. Uh, this is gear oil we're using this. Some on the, the bearing. It actually sounds like I'm hitting it harder because you've, it's a metal shed, it sort of vibrates, everything vibrates, including my teeth. Right, that one next. Yeah. Oh, these little dinky wee ones. Hammer for that. Is that one on? Right, and the gear selector one goes actually onto the that outer casing. Looks like there's a bit of that casing chewed off there. These things get hella abuse. They do. Used and abused. Right, next thing we're going to put on is the... Oh, the sort of... Gubbins at this side. You want to make sure you're... It's sort of suspended. So that's that on. Right, what we want to do is I think we could get the gear the kickstart on next. Put it on next. There's that gear. I think we'll put this on next. Right, a wee bit of gear I want to there. A shim, I'll see if that's just actually in focus here. Yep, right, you've got a metal shim. Right, this thing has to get preloaded. I'm just trying to remember how you do this. That goes in that stop and that spring. Uh, let's see. In the casing, there's, I'm sure the spring goes down inside there. When you've got that there, that's a stop. That'll hit against that, I would think. I'm sure. Right, have another attempt. Right, that's that and that spring does go do that slot. I just had to sort of try and leave it in and 
twist that at the same time and push it in. So that's that. Right, the next thing is this gear. This obviously transfers the the kick starting motion right into the, the gearbox. Right, so you've got a washer there, a gear oil, that shoulder facing in the way. Got another another shim. Circle up looks a bit misshaped. the pinion gear for that. Right, that's the pinion on. I'll just put that finger tight now. Right, next thing is the gubbins. <laughs> I'm terrible for names. So I've got that and I want it, so I wasn't going to lose anything. Right, so first off, I've got a thick washer. Basket, and you've got sort of bush in there. Well, what I, what I do first, which is very important, because the bike will go very far through it. I better put the selector fork on. been a good one. Right, what I have to do here. Right, you've got a sort of keyway there. That I'll have to take the tension off of this. So that's just going to go on the one way. Been a good one. Oh, I've been a cracker. Right. Okay. Where is
this out on. Now you've got the selector rod. That obviously goes right to the other side. Got a bit of lubrication on that. Just make sure there's no damage or anything to that. Now I'm going to have to get a, a bigger block. Or suspend it a bit better. Oh, that's hard, eh? That's slack. And if that came out right, what would that be about 12? That would have been very handy. Just check that out quite well here. Yeah, well that's not going to go. That has to be how, how that goes, like that. Right. That looks like somebody has welded that in the past. Oh, it gets better. Right, now we can get the that would have been good that. Got a bit up and you've not got any body gears. That's where the kickstart engages to, and that's where your your drive, your crankshaft goes on to through your your gearbox. Right, that's that on. Washer there. The clutch and a drum, I think that's called. Make sure they need damage or not, or wear. Another wee bit of lube. Right. I've got a rather worn out looking locking tab. I'm going to have to sort that out.
just gonna put it here we can right I'll have to look up the torque for this this will probably be come my old measurements about 40 pounds Whichever that equates to in metric. Yeah, I'm going to have to get the torque for that. Right, I've got the torque for this. Uh, that nut is 45 newton meters and so is the crank one so the two of them are 45 newton meters and that equates to about 33 pounds foot right so I've got this my homemade contraption here I knocked this up one Sunday when I was kind of desperate for to get an engine done it's a bit of a monstrosity light, but it works. Right, so. In midair. This can be a bit of. I used to get the wife to give me a hand to do this. <laughs> right. One, I think that doesn't feel right. So that's that one tightened up. Never be tempted, I would say this more than but it's never be tempted to try and do that with putting a screwdriver in there because they will break and I'm talking for experience here. Because I broke them. Right, we'll get that bent up. I've done a few of these and that nut's actually been slack. Right, that's to get tightened the same, so we'll try this technique. This doesn't always work, like. Right? Get one of your good towels. So that's going to be turning that way. What size will that be? That could be a 15. This might work. Yeah, it might not. It might just chew the tail up. I have to get better tails. T-shirt used to be white, believe it or not. It was a goal of Bruce Willis. <laughs> he was sick, sick and jump, jumping at skyscrapers.
There's another way I could do that, but I'm not, not a fan of doing that. You can put a, a rod through there. Right, our next thing, that's that tightened up, that's on, that's on, locking tail's bent over, now we get the clutch on. Right. On the friction plates. Give that a wee. Off with the, the pressure plate, you've got a wee bearing on there. That looks alright. sure you get this on the right wet rink. I notice there's a, a sort of mark there. That's it. That I just need pushed in. They're uh, in the back of the car. Right, and with the, t the clutch springs. Forward. There'll be a torque for these. Exciting stuff this. I'll go back in. I right, just screw these in evenly. My apprentice has just appeared. Your what? My apprentice. Oh, me? Oh, you talking on your... Yes. All oh, right, I better go. Goodbye. I thought you might bring me a cup of tea. You want a cup of tea? Nah. All right. Hmm? I'll be finishing shortly as well. Right. I've had enough of this today.
I'll get this cover on and not be me. That's tight enough for me. Definitely. Right. Oh. Start to sweat. That's unusual. Right, don't get that. Some that super gun junior. Get the right, on. so that's uh, the clutch casing on. All the bolts are torqued to 10 newton meters. I've put the oil pump on. That's that's not going to be doing anything. Like it's just to blank off the hole. Right now, I've got the four studs to put in there. Basically, holds the the cylinder and cylinder head on. Now you have to make sure when you're putting these in. That they're tightened right up, because if they're not tight and you try and tighten the head bolts, that will just rip the threads right out of that. 